This is going to be a really long video. So the most recent of my reads has been The Memoirs of a Geisha by Arthur Green, published in 1997. I love this book for three good reasons. One, the language is every day. Two, it flows very well. Three, the story is enchanting. So let's get into the general synopsis of the 495 page fictional novel. The story begins in 1920s Japan with a small girl named Chiyo. Her mother is terribly ill and her father is grown frail. So one day Mr. Tanaka, a wild hero local, makes some sort of agreement. And Chiyo, alongside her 13 year old sister, are sent to Kyoto. The girls don't know what to expect. And as it happens, they become separated. The older sister is being taken away into a brothel, which is basically a prostitute house, while Chio is taken by Nika Okia with potential of becoming a geisha. Chio is given the role of a maid, and we and we and we and we see the world through her eyes for the next three months. The book immerses us richly into her surroundings. Then one day, her maid days seem to be all over as she begins her long and tiresome training to become a geisha. All seemingly going well and she even surprises a fellow girl training to become a geisha, Pumpkin. However, it is not all smooth sailing. Hatsumomo, a geisha living under the same roof, despises Chiu and attempts to make her life as miserable as possible by putting her into tremendous death. To add to all of this, after Chiu's attempted escape, Mother, which is the head of the geisha, is forced to withdraw her from her training and she believes Shio to be a bad investment. Of course, Shio's spirits have been hindered and it seems that all hope is lost. Two years after she went back into maid work on one of her shopping ventures, she stumbles and grazes her nose on the floor. Everyone walks by oblivious, they don't care. Everyone but one man, the chairman. It is he who makes her whole outlook on life change. He gives her a will to live and in that moment, she is changed from a girl facing nothingness to a girl with a purpose. She thought that by becoming a geisha, it'd be a stepping stone into another world, into the chairman's world. Chiyo remains a maid until the age of 15. During that time, the war is only expanding and it's reaching Japan. One random day, a well renowned geisha known as Mameha stops by. She is commonly referred as perfect and has huge respect by everyone. Swish, swish, bish. Another one in the basket. She has come to make an agreement with Mother to place Chio back into her geisha training. This is the agreement. If Chio has not repaid her death by her debut, Mameha will be paid half the price of a standard geisha. And bear in mind, Mameha is the top of the top, so it's a huge blow and setback for her if she fails. On the contrary, if Chio has cleared all her death, which I need to clarify is absolutely substantial, Mameha will earn double the rate for her services and training. It was agreed so, Chio would become geisha if all went well. As you can imagine, Hatsumomo was not happy as her purpose of making Chio's life a living misery has resurfaced. In the following few chapters, Chio trains to become a geisha. These chapters have tremendous depth, but quite favorably, everything is in simple, easy to understand words, allowing you to create the setting in your own mind with absolute ease. These chapters are fascinating, but I'll leave it up to you to read. Whew. After all our shiny training, Chiyo and Mameha become sisters in a very traditional ceremony. This is where Mameha takes all the responsibility over Chiyo. If Chiyo fails, Mameha will suffer, both financially and reputation-wise. This is a really big thing. On this very evening, Chiyo is no longer, and she will now be called Sayuri. Sayuri is now an apprentice geisha, and she will join Mameha on her outings to tea house visits and other special requests. Men pay hourly rates at these places. And here is a bit of history on why they actually attend. Most wealthy men have arranged marriages and truth be told a lot of these wives might be very unattractive or just boring. That's why these men pay the pleasure of being entertained by a beautiful professional who sings, dances, is wonderful in conversation and knows how to pour sake. Geisha bring joy to these men's lives. At this point of the book, all seems to be quite promising to Sayuri. She seems to have a nice future laid out. But Hatsumomo strikes again. Her rage surfaces. She is livid and absorbed by destroying Sayuri by stalking her and spreading rumors around the town, ultimately not letting Sayuri work. To counter this, 
Mameha takes Sayuri as far from Hatsumomo as possible and brings her to a sumo match. Here she meets the character of Nobu, a very important player in the later life of Sayuri. She also meets the chairman again. She has finally found a man, her purpose. The next few chapters were very well written as almost a mystery. But essentially, Sayuri is putting her miswaj, or virginity, for sale as most geisha do. And this is where she'll make the money to pay her debts. Mamiha is orchestrating a bidding war between Nobu, a very respectable businessman who's highly regarded, and Dr. Crab, who loves collecting girls such as Sayuri more than anything else. To keep it brief, a lot happens. Mamiha's Dana joins the bidding, but regardless, Dr. Crab wins at a record breaking price. To make the most of these earnings and kind of take modern day tax, Mother adopts Sayuri. Chio, who is Sayuri, will now be known as Nita Sayuri. Dr. Crab does his thing and Sayuri becomes a full geisha. As time passes, Sayuri gains interest from two men who wish to be her dana. Nobu and a general. Nobu is a better man, but the general will provide the Okia with much better aid in these tough war times. As the war continues reaching the region of Gion, Kyoto, where Sayuri is based, Geisha flee, as all the tea houses are closed and they are forced to work in factories or seek protection from many of the prosperous men that they have met in their past. Sayuri is in depths of despair, pleading to her Dana, but he has been ridiculed and is made powerless now. But Nobu once again comes to the rescue. He sends Sayuri to a remote house near Kyoto to work alongside a kimono maker. She'll be kept safe there. Sayuri spends the next four years whittling away and making parachutes for the military. She hears of nothing of the outside world. After these four years, Nobu comes to visit. He tells her that all is changing Gaian once again and tea houses are being opened and the city is rebuilt. He wants her to return to her once greatness as a geisha. Jaon Tororo is now outside of Sayuri's life completely and Sayuri convinced Mother to reopen her oikia which led to her performing once again as a geisha. But times have changed now. The Americans were everywhere now and any Japanese woman with a painted face could say she was a geisha. Sayuri would have to adapt to entertaining Americans and they were very different to Japanese. The Americans were wild, outspoken and often liked to dance with geisha. At this time Nobu only wanted one thing, Sayuri to entertain him and an American colonel who was a very stern man. Sayuri gathered the help of Mameha and Pumpkin who is a super bubbly character. This went off for weeks. Months even. Then, Nobu proposed to be her Dana once business started to become booming again. She's taken aback as she's disturbed by Nobu's deformed face but still flattered. Once in private with Mameha, she lets all her feelings cascade, revealing that she'll do anything possible as long as Nobu doesn't become her Dana. This is where it gets really interesting. She schemes to have sex with the Colonel and Nobu to walk in at the exact moment it happens. But it isn't Nobu who walks in on them, it is the chairman. Weeks pass as Sayuri entertains in their favorite tea house, but neither Nobu, the colonel or the chairman make an appearance. On one night's entry it appears to be completely deserted, but she still enters and comes into a room, only to find the chairman sitting calmly reading a newspaper. She is shook and immediately apologetic about the whole incident. The chairman is so polite and he explains everything to her. How on that night with the colonel, she was inf infuriated but wanted to know why. And when he found that Pumpkin was meant to be Nobu, it all became clear. The chairman talked about the day that he first met Sayuri along the river. He was the very man who persuaded Mameha to find Sayuri and make a real geisha of her. He was the one who wanted to become her Dana from the very first day. But one thing stopped him, Nobu. From the first moment that Nobu set his eyes on Sayuri, he became excited and alive, and the chairman had to conceal his feelings, as he had owed Nobu a great debt. Nobu was a great man who the chairman appreciated, but nothing really good happened to Nobu. Sayuri was his only happiness. So for all of these years, all these tea house visits, the chairman concealed his feelings for Sayuri, avoiding her as best as he could. At that moment, he offers to be her Dana and kisses her passionately. This is Yuri's first real kiss. Finally, her purpose of life is fulfilled. 
If you stuck with me for this very, very long video, thank you because this book is phenomenal and I highly recommend it. It was an amazing read, super long, but completely worth it and I just loved it. Be sure to stick around and watch some of my other videos. They're gonna be great.